Jumping over to the main, this is where we begin chatting, everybody. We are here. We are live. The uh, uh, the Instapot is whistling. The soup is ready. I have my ladle. Uh, oh, wait. No, no, no. I have a spatula. I don't, I, I don't have a ladle. But I am ready. I didn't come some prepared with the utensil. Owlbear soup. <laughs> Uh, I am one of your hosts. I am Justin. Welcome to Albert Soup. And I am joined by... Hey, I'm Rich. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited. <laughs> I love that the chef is, uh, you know, it's a rush week, right? Uh, and Instapots just are easier. So let's let's fill that up, yeah. just set it to simmer and like walk away. I mean, don't walk away. Yeah. We have a show to do. <laughs> no, no, no. Just but listen for the whistle. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, man. You know, uh, we took a week off, and uh, I have absolutely no clue how this show works. So uh, this is going to be an adventure for all of us. Uh, everybody, uh, welcome what? aboard. I've had tea, and um, something's supposed to happen now. What are we supposed to do now, Rich? Uh, after you have tea, I think uh, you get some energy and eventually have to expel that tea. Is that what you're looking for? or No, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, what kind of gaming or anything have you been doing lately? Oh, right, right. Um, oh my gosh. Well, I have a so, surprise in this that you haven't even heard about. I know we haven't even talked about this. Um, I just wrapped up my my campaigns for the Academy of Adventures. Um, it was great. Uh -huh. I tried I tried really hard to give them a big finale, and so um, you know we've been doing this basically for five weeks this season. At the end of the fourth week, wherever they were, I just cut them off, and it was just like okay, so. <laughs> you receive an invitation to graduation. Uh, it's from a time traveling assassin who's been harassing you all year long. And at the very bottom, it says, um, Oh gosh, what did I write down? Um, it was like a, a welcome to the, the start of your new life, but it was more like uh, you know, we were going to destroy a whole new world, a whole destroyed world or something wild. Um, shoot. I should have that pulled up world. so I could remember. And instantly all of them are super mad. They're like, wait, graduation, high noon, summer solstice, that assassin. Okay. We're going to go take him down. Um, and so then I had just like these perfect seven different ways that these groups decided to go through and, and defeat this assassin. They, uh, they were all seventh level at that point. So they've got tons of abilities. Mm -hmm. And as they went in, the biggest thing I did was I put them into basically a outside of reality. So they were in a pocket dimension. I gave them subjective gravity. Do you want to fly? Cool. You can fly now. That's fine. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and then I had them meet their future selves. And they were all in cages. The time traveling assassin had brought them and gathered them here. And I said, don't worry, kids, it's fine. You meeting your past selves would be a problem. You're all going to be OK. That's not a paradox at all. And immediately all the no. kids are like, but my future self. And I was like, oh, yeah, they're gonna, they're dead right now. No, <laughs> they are being erased in front of your eyes. And uh, so I asked them, like, who they were. And I, I had them give me like an, uh, you know, an epilogue in advance for their characters. And then I use yeah. that to give them the choice of two epic boons, like the things you're not supposed to give until people are like level 20 <laughs> in yeah. the DMG. Um, and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Level seven, level five would be a fun way to do it. Level seven was good for us, but it was a choice and uh, it was great. They got to decide, do you want immortality? It's not going to benefit you in this battle, but this combat prowess where anytime you miss, you can just be like, eh, I decide to hit. And then I can't do that again until a short rest. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very useful right now and they, they were just deciding which one they yeah. wanted it was so much fun and then they battled this assassin and like these ridiculous paradox elementals and we had a great time the oh, end that's awesome. um yeah, it was great. <laughs> uh, also the calisandra thanks for the follow welcome welcome oh, welcome yeah. aboard the saving throw crew <laughs> oh level five level, level five here's your boon it's fine it'll be fine <laughs> have you played with those boons um i have the, not the, the, i have I, not but the dark gifts look very interesting to me in, in a certain book that we might talk about in a little yeah, bit. They do. So, um, yeah, the epic <laughs> boons you're not supposed not. to get until you're level 20, and then you still play the game. And every, I think it's 30,000 experience you're supposed to get another one. And, like, no, 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 just get that <laughs> stuff early. It's too much fun. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. also got, it's um, next to like the titles and the rewards that you get besides magic items. So. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I I started a. I somehow got wrangled into a Friday night D and D game. Um, Whoa! <laughs> I I don't know how this really worked out, uh, but uh, 
in, in literally like the day of the game, I texted Aubrey. I was like, I think, I think I'm in a D and D game tonight at five o'clock. And she's like, Oh, okay. Have fun. I was like, sweet. I'm going to go do this. Um, and it's with like some, some people I know through the DJ community here on Twitch. And, um, uh, so, so it's it's uh, it's a bunch of people who who like to party, who are new to D and D, who are who are you know uh, that 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 kind of crowd uh, uh, going to the EDM <laughs> festivals. Like we're talking like let's go to EDC and then we'll run some sessions there in between uh, DJs <laughs> that we 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 like or not. But uh, anyway, so so the big thing is uh, about this is I am playing a uh, so we're level one, so I don't know what kind of druid I am yet, but I'm a druid. Uh, I'm playing a hexblade. Oh, Hexblade, Hexblood, because uh, out of a certain book, uh, because I <laughs> needed to play the Hexblood. And I am playing um, uh, El uh, Elpha, uh, Gatterness or something like that, but doesn't matter. I tell everyone, call me Granny, and I have cookies, okay. uh, because I took the chef feat at first level. Uh, because we all got first level feats for free because yeah. you know that's just what you do and so so i have these cookies and uh, i always sprinkle like little uh a little <laughs> bit of a uh, of, of frosting on top of it little like uh crunchy bits so to to uh, improve the taste that are dried bugs and uh but my my party just is is totally dick <laughs> you know it's is, is totally weirded out by the fact that i occasionally pull out a tooth and i hand it to him i say okay you hold on to this i'm gonna i'll chat with you later <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good i i imagine that you were gonna say every once in a while one of the cookies has a tooth in it they don't even notice they eat them so fast <laughs> yeah now oh you man can track that would be that hilarious right? wherever <laughs> i just toss a thing I, I just toss a fingernail into cookie and uh then i then then i can talk to them through their stomach right right <laughs> that, uh, i know we're gonna talk about it but the, the hex blood is super cool <laughs> 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 oh man so anyway i i uh, i'm thoroughly enjoying gr playing granny uh, i call everybody uh baby doll and darlin and mm -hmm. uh big guy uh we have a goliath and, and she's like hey there big guy would you like a cookie <laughs> <laughs> just right. in mid dungeon that's not like a before the game begins thing that's just like you're walking from room to room everyone's covered in blood <laughs> and yeah absolutely you like a cookie? Yeah, and, and, and Granny is nonplussed by anything. Like we saw some cosmic horror, we saw some 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 weird stuff, and and Granny's like, "Well, that's uh, that's not good. Uh, who would like some of these good berries? And uh, <laughs> who wants some treats <laughs> from this X blood? Uh, oh my gosh! Um, I love. We it. have news to go through. We do, yes. Uh, I mean, it's been two weeks, so we picked some of our, I don't know, favorite news items. No, I just found the biggest yeah. things I could. I'm super excited about uh, about all this stuff. Um, gosh, we didn't plan. Is it you or is it me? It's me. All right, um, go for it. I made a decision. I am super excited. Uh, my first bit of news is uh, about Wizards of the Coast and how they are changing the lore of the drow, um, which, holy cow, thank you. Um, in a very cool way they, they basically like the the drow have always been stuck in uh uh oh gosh can i say it out loud uh menzo baranon uh land of lolf and uh in mm -hmm. in the deep that's how uh that's how i believe uh ice cube says it um in one of the in the deep oh uh, yeah <laughs> audio one of the yeah. uh audiobooks yeah yeah um, so I'm really excited that they have taken this this entire like all the drow from uh, from this kind of just dark, barren, evil place, and they are giving us different types of drow from different places and saying that that city that that most D and D players are familiar with, or in the Forgotten Realms at least, is specifically evil because it is specifically run by these followers of Lolth. Um, mm -hmm. And they are adding a couple new types of drow that are going to be in different places. Um, Let's see if I can do all their names justice. Um, the uh, the Avon Drow, the uh, the Starlight Elves, are going to be ones who rejected Lolf and then vanished to the far north. Um, their lands okay. are hidden and hard to get to, which is one of the reasons that we haven't seen them in the lore up until now. Um, we also have the Southern Jungles, where the Drow city of Sekaloth, populated by the Loren Drow, uh, dwellers of the Endless Green. So I think that's very oh, cool. Nice. Um, more of a, a forest-based feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I just love that they're doing this because it's one thing for them to consistently say that, no, 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 we're, we're done with that. Not all drow are evil, but we're not going to, you know, write more about that to, to now just being like, here are these other places. These are official. They are in the lore. Um, and you know, they're official because R.A. Salvatore is writing about them in the next book coming out. Yeah. Uh, Starlight Enclave, Enclave. There we go. Which I assume is about that northern group of uh, Avon drow. I already... Yeah, got to get the name straight. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I'll, yeah, I'll have to check that out. It's been a little while since I've read an R.A. Salvatore book, but right. Me uh, too. I'm definitely, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do it. Yeah, this one um, is, uh, so... is old favorites. It is a Jarlaxle book, so yeah, get in there. Okay, oh, I like Jarlaxle, so I'm into <laughs> that. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pivot away from D and D a little bit, uh, and I am going to talk about uh, Zack Snyder's uh, explosive action-packed movie army of the dead oh okay the zombie side game uh <laughs> what so <Hold> what <laughs> uh, cool mini and not yeah cool mini and not and and netflix have gone together and they are making a new version of of zombie side that will uh be army of the dead themed it's going to be a uh, a streamlined zombie fighting cooperative experience uh that you guys mm -hmm. you know you can kind of expect from that game uh, cause I, I don't know if you played Zombicide. It's a ton of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, it fan. just has a ton of minis and it's coming. So, uh, that's totally something to keep an eye out for. I'm that's very really tempted, cool. uh, by this, even though I haven't <laughs> watched a movie yet, but I will be watching Ooh. the movie soon. Gosh, I was going to talk to you all about the movie, uh, cause I have watched it and, uh, and I'm kind of excited for this. It's, it's a good theme for exactly what Zombicide does well. Um, Oh, great. And yeah, gives them a playground for a lot of... Okay, I'll leave it. That's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. I'm, all, I, I'm excited for both to watch the movie and to um, enjoy the game. We just, we've just we just had guests for the past week, so uh, zombie movies weren't quite world. on the... I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fair all enough. Right, what you got? Um, well, I... on. I've got a board game at the very least, but I'm, I'm swinging right back to D&D. &D. Um, I oh. am excited. Uh, <laughs> uh, there have been a lot of uh, Opoly games, um, Monopolies, uh, you know, in the past. And uh, and not all of them have caught my attention. I did not pick up a, a copy of, say, Portlandopoly. Um, but there is a D&D &D Monopoly, and, uh, and they could have gone about this a couple different ways. Um, and I'm really excited about it because the way that they are going about this game just tickles me a little bit. Um, you are playing one of the um, monster hunters working for Volo. And Volo wants you to get out into the world and be like, look, uh, I need you to capture some monsters for study. And you're like, okay, so I'm going to head over to, I don't know, say Park Place, which in this game is the, uh, uh, I just had it up, the Demogorgon. There we go. Um, Mm -hmm. And your monster hunters are basically going to set up shop outside a Demogorgon lair, um, building expeditions, those are your houses and hotels and everything, and just basically, like, your job is capturing these monsters and bringing them back, which I just love, like the new spin on capitalism that we have here in this DD monopoly game where we're using <laughs> not like houses and homes but it's an adventuring economy of going out grabbing these monsters for study and who knows what other nefarious purposes oh man yeah no i uh, when you told me they themed it i mean yeah oh man it's it's like <laughs> I, I i could imagine like them building like little job boards and little like taverns to to attract mm -hmm. the adventures and yeah. you know when you land your mace <laughs> or whatever it is in the in the slot uh <laughs> i mean That's it is wild. gonna have treasure and encounters those are the community chest and chance cards there um oh, uh, so i was good. just trying to take a look at exactly what the Railroads oh, you looked that up. I just want to say, uh, with where with all thanks for subbing for 12 months. That's a year, that's a long time. That's like <laughs> amazing, that's like all of recent history. Uh, <laughs> so right, but, uh, you is it, <laughs> have you gotten a chance to actually like physically check out this game yet? No, I do have a copy uh, this of, version of Monopoly. Uh, no, I have DD Clue. Um, sitting on my oh, shelf for okay. to take a look at soon um but i am hopeful to get Sweet. this one because i just it's got this huge enormous dragon in the center of the board of course and all of the spaces are cool like D, &D monsters there's there's a number hulk there's a mind flayer uh there's a beholder you know it's just all the classics um 
And of course, there's that that dumb little free parking car, you know, (laughs) (laughs) that we all know. And you have to have that. Those have not changed. That's Monopoly. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Yeah, it's we can pretend it's a lightning rail or something. I'm not really sure. But (laughs) (laughs) the corners never change. That's the Monopoly rule. (laughs) Uh, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about some Warhammer. So um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and talk about a couple, uh, you know, just one Warhammer thing real quick that has come out. Uh, this is on in on the Warhammer community.com. So you can go check out there. There are some updates uh, to some of the points for certain uh, 40K units uh, from Citadel and Forge World. Uh, so you can gu- kind of go and pop out uh, over there and go check it out it is um you know things like uh they, we have new points for the land raiders storm speeders immortals uh from the necrons wraith guards and wraith blades uh from uh, the craft worlds uh gene stealers pure strain gene stealers so there's you know and from uh-huh. the tyranids so if you if you play tyranids you play uh Eldar, you play Necrons, you play uh, the various types of uh, uh, Space Marines. There are some updates to the uh, points, and uh, the Land Raider specifically was pretty interesting uh, because I think it's a drop in points, and you get more stuff. So uh, that's that's pretty sweet. If that's if that if I read that correctly, but I don't play I don't play uh, Space Marine armies, so I can't help there. Uh, but yeah, it's, I think it's, I think it's totally worth checking out if you're, if you're a Warhammer player and you play any of those, uh, any of those, uh, armies. Yeah, Very cool. That's wow. what I had to say about Warhammer. I have to talk about Warhammer it's once every so pretty often. Pretty good. Yeah, you do. Um, oh my gosh. I was just looking at your next bit of news cause I, I'm all out. I jumped ahead and I, I talked about the oh, you did. Salvatore book as well. I just lumped it all together. I'm excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, so this one's pretty interesting. Uh, we got this press release uh, last week, yes. and I was super excited to uh, to try it, to to do all of this, because I do have Amazon Alexa. Uh, but I, I didn't do it yet. I meant to do it today, but I overslept. So, yeah, we'll talk about <laughs> it some other week. Uh, in, in the meantime, uh, Paizo has a um, an epic uh, Starfinder ga- uh, skill that you can play on Alexa. Uh, so, uh, Wander World or Wander Word, I apologize, is the name of the company. They're the ones who have put this together. They worked with Paizo to create it, and so it's an interactive um, game that you can play with your uh, Alexa, where you're a Starfinder and you have to go on a series of adventures. Um, so, starting off, it's an interactive space audio adventure with over 13 hours of audio, you know, set. Uh, there's one free tutorial style mission. It's called Scoundrels in the Spike. And then there will be six premium full missions uh, that are available at this time to play. So um, uh, the Starfinder uh, Scoundrels in Spike was adapted uh, for Alexa by James L. Sutter, former Starfinder creative director and uh, an award-winning author. Ooh. And it does feature some voice talents of folks that you may have heard of, uh, one Laura Bailey, from Critical Role in Last of Us Part Two, and uh, this little unknown actor named uh, Nathan Fillion from some show that nobody seems to like called Firefly and yeah. Castle. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. I I can see into our green room. <laughs> our guest is confused by that name as well. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's 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 a little strange. So doesn't seem whoever like this Nathan Fillion chap guy. is. It, nah. <laughs> but yeah that should be a ton of fun I'm, I'm 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 looking forward to trying that out i'm really curious about this experience um because seeing this and knowing that they you know they've been working on this for quite a while um i want to know what it's like when you were playing and they're like okay so you see you know your, your ship is moving forward uh towards this planet like do you just is it choose your own adventure style am i saying like yeah i don't know alexa roll 2d20 and uh you know, cast these spells. I don't, I want to see it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, D20 Monkey is letting us know he's Googling that Nathan Fillion name oh, right okay. now. And hopefully Check we'll be that. able to figure it out. Yeah. Whenever, whenever we have him on. But uh, before we get to that, we do have a couple of reviews. Uh, let's go ahead and kick on over to the review screen. I'm oh, sorry. I was. Wayne's world. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so so <laughs> we went Wayne, Wayne's world on over to our first review. We're going to be talking a little bit 
about some of our favorite parts of this book. This has been Richten's Guide to Ravenloft from A Wizards cool. of the Coast. It came out uh, two weeks ago. We took last week off, so we weren't able to talk about it, but we could talk about it now. All uh, right. I I have to say, like, after the last book, I am so happy to have this book in my hands. Um, <laughs> yeah. Candle keep candle candle keep was fine, but it wasn't it wasn't as engaging as this one. This one, well, I'm 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 so into. Uh, there's character options. There's great tools for DMs. There's some fantastic maps in here. Mm -hmm. Um, it's 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 gorgeous. Um, we last year in October when we were uh, you know in the beta phase of this show when we were we were trying to figure out what we were doing we did a we did a whole section talking about different types of horror. And one of the yeah. sections in this book is very close to, you know, sim being similar to what we were talking about in that, you know, talking about body horror, talking about cosmic horror, uh, you know, the different types of horror to to throw at your players uh, to, to kind of interact, you know, and, and, and play the game. So, yeah, and it talks about all that in here and it does a really great job. Uh, the, all the different. It, I'm going to bramble. Uh, Rich, <laughs> just 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 pick a topic and go because. I will just keep jumping all over the place going, oh my God, well, there's, this, and there's this. I mean, right. There is all that in here. It's so good. I love this book because, you know, like you mentioned, Candlekeep Chronicle or uh, Candlekeep Mysteries, there we go, is a book where if you have all these mysteries, these adventures set for you, it's a series of one shots, right? Yeah. This is like mm -hmm. a homebrewer's playground is this book, you know, which I love as a DM. Um, I have so many different ideas in here that I can use to just like spark uh, me for like my own one shots or my own little world worlds mm -hmm. um this this game does or this book does such a good idea of allowing you to give a little bit of horror to your game you know you could design a ton if you want to the worlds in here and we'll check in on a couple of them are pretty exciting but if you just want like your players to like step around a corner enter the mists and be in one of the domains of dread for like a couple sessions this book is perfect for giving you the flavor for that um and that makes me really yeah. happy um so yeah um, I love, we, i look yeah yeah <laughs> oh, I was just gonna say, I, I, you know, I mean, blah, right? Uh, one of the things that I just really love it in in books are tools to reward players, as mm -hmm. opposed to you know just normal things like magic items or gold or whatever. Like tools to reward players, and yeah. and the one one of the things that just stood out so much to me are the dark gifts. Uh, you can make deals with sure. some of these people that you meet in these mists, and it's a fun way to give your players like some power, but at a cost. But it's it's not like a some of them have a little bit of a mechanical cost, but the mechanical cost isn't so bad that it detracts from the fun of the power and the role playing opportunities yeah. around it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good. These are really good. I like this. Um, especially, you know, I've used these as your character dies and is coming back and someone talks to you during that, allowing you, you know, raise dead ish or, you know, if you fail that last death save, then maybe this bargain happens. But mm -hmm. I like that there are other moments in here that they're called out. Like, um, just you know they show up and want to make a deal or you are suffering a curse or you've broken a vow and you get one of these dark gifts because of it um i just think it's fun it's a really great rule set or you're just or you're just having a bad day you know yeah. uh, you know dark lord shows up and is like hey <laughs> it, it, it 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 rained on your wedding day it uh uh-huh you know there was ten thousand forks when all you needed was a knife um, oh gosh you know you know when whole... uh, those situations <laughs> Those situations are are the times when that dark gift is really tempting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I will tell you one thing I am excited about as well, which is that this book has an official investigator background. Um, and, yes. you know, looking through it, you get to focus on your first case. You get a badge that will let you in because you are a member of an official inquiry, which is, I mean, after writing a, a book on investigations, um, something that I want. I wanted this background. I'm glad it's here. I'm glad it's creepy. And I'm glad it comes with a list of 100 brand new horror trinkets um, that are all Spe every single speaking one. Of is your a book on, yeah. <laughs> speaking of your, 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 your book on, on investigations, uh, what was that book called and where can folks find it? Oh, that was Empyrean Investigations. You can grab that on Drive Through RPG. Um, it's got a lot of stuff, not quite <laughs> as horrific as this book, um, but uh, right. mysteries for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh man. Oh gosh. Uh, subclass options are things that we have seen before in Unearthed Arcana. We've got the Bard College of Spirits and the Undead Warlock. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I'm glad to see them here. And they've also reprinted, I reprinted, updated the haunted one. Um, mm -hmm. Background as well. Better. Yeah. Better. Uh, yeah. They or, or sorry. I was thinking about the um, uh, they're not calling them races. They're calling them. Oh, man, my Lineage. brain. My lineages. Brain. Lineages. There we go. <laughs> I love the I the I love the lineages in here. Um, mm -hmm. We have uh, you know I've already talked a little bit about the hex blood. Uh, and, and so the hex blood is pretty fantastic. That's somebody who has had some interactions with the witch, uh, yeah. or a, or a um, uh, a hag of hag. some sort, and has made some kind of deal. So yeah, so that the so now they kind of grow these horns out of their heads, and uh, they have cool special abilities like the they they can take a part of their body. Uh, typically like a tooth or a, a fingernail they can hand it to to a companion or anyone and they they can communicate telepathically or they can see through that item um mm -hmm. and they can do that like uh once a day i think and then the, the whatever it is they got rid of they it, it grows back so that they can do it again and, and then get again yeah it's really gross and i love it um, i love it and then uh of course we have the damn fear which mm -hmm. i will say we were right when we reviewed the yes. playtest version of it. Uh, they did that. change, <laughs> clarify the bite. They also moved the bite from any time to uh, as many times as your proficiency bonus a day, which, which I is think is a, a genius way of doing this thing. I love, I love that exactly. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then um, the last one was the reborn. I want to say, and it also, yeah, it also got more exciting. I like and, that there are plenty more did. options here for the reborn. Uh, it's a, it's a solid mm -hmm. lineage now. Um, I also like yeah. how all of these allow you to basically play if you want to be a dwarven reborn, that's totally cool. And there are choices and rules in here to mm -hmm. let you do that. So it's a, yeah. it's a, it's a yeah. smart one of the cool really things. Just... Yeah, one of the cool things like I, I, when I was building my hex blood, I could have chosen to be a small character or a medium character. Mm -hmm. And right. that's and I think that's a ton of fun. Um, you yeah. know, like, oh, I was a gnome and I made a deal with a hag, or I was a human and I made, you know, however yeah. it works. Or I'm just, yeah. I'm just a hexblood. That's you. You have that option as well, where right. you don't really have a, a other lineage than hexblood. Mm -hmm. So it's very cool. Um, um, but the biggest part of this book is chapter three, which is the domains yeah. of Ravenloft. And I, I this for mm -hmm. me is fantastic. This is the playground that I want because, like I said, I just want to head into one of these realms, like wonder, look around, and be like, what the heck is going on here? Solve a couple problems, and then you know head back home, get out of the mists and deal with my regular campaign. Um, but some of these these realms are really interesting and I would I would love like a longer campaign inside them. Mm -hmm. um, for example, one of them, uh, Darkon is, is one that kind of called to me. This is a domain on the brink of destruction. And basically it is this domain, right? This little kind of pocket horror dimension where, um, uh, where a lich was imprisoned. Um, Azalyn Rex was was trapped in here and that darkness kind of suffused the entire realm and the lich broke free and got the heck out of here oh. and uh, went back to somewhere else and now this place Darkon is suffused with evil there are beings who are trying to rise up to fill up this like power vacuum and there's also just this ongoing supernatural catastrophe because of the the freedom that this lich found um so I mean already like thematically I I want to play there. <laughs> I um I have a request, uh, Rich. Have you yes. seen the TV show Sliders, like in the nineties? Yes. Um, okay, so I would I would like you to yeah, run a D and D game that's kind of Sliders esque, where uh, you know we spend like one to three sessions in each of these, and we're going around trying to solve part of their problem. And like, yeah. you know, maybe that's just going to solve the entire multiverse problem. Uh, so I would like you Ooh. to go ahead and write that campaign and get on running it. Oh, gosh, darn. I was just planning a different campaign yesterday. Are you kidding me? <laughs> 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 yes, Jerry O'Connell. That's who I was trying to remember. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. I like that because actually this book would let you run that pretty well. Like usually there are, you know, in these, it details the domains. It talks about some possible adventures. It has some of the major villains who are there. Like in in here, um, who do we have here? We have uh, the Baron who believes that uh, mm -hmm. that they are the next inheritor of this entire place and will become the Dark Lord. And they're trying to gain power mm -hmm. throughout this whole process. I love it. Um, I would also head to Calicari. This one seems very based on on uh, Indian mythology, um, so mm -hmm. uh, I just oh my gosh, the pictures in here are fantastic. Um, but it's a lot of uh, of kind of like the I guess 
southern India is what it feels like a lot. Um, uh, a lot of water, uh, a lot of, well, power battles. That's what's going on. This is a place of constant war. Um, there are monstrous leaders. There's family intrigues. And the people who live here are just stuck. Like, oh, you're in charge now? Okay, fine. Oh, now it's you? All right. Uh, their loyalty is just, they just don't have any because they can't. Um, it seems like a very different place. Uh, and in this one, the leaders all feel alone and they feel angry about it. I mean, I just, yeah, just, uh, it would be so good. It would be so good. <laughs> I would love to play here. <laughs> yeah oh, and i and i agree dj who it's kind of an off-kilter version of quantum leap yeah yeah, yeah i think I that's mean, accurate <laughs> <laughs> yeah, accurate accurate yeah. um you know and in and in like all of these books you know and, and i have some of the art going here the i got the non-special edition because i only get the non-special editions right, um, right. i am a monster but i want match. all of my i want all my spines to match yeah. um i did not put put a lot of a lot of them in here but there are some really cool different things you can do like with survivors with your taruka deck um with uh there's some really cool monsters in here uh oh my gosh. they talk about things like <laughs> seances and like you know i'm gonna just pull this bad boy up right here you know it's boneless right here that's so good and then over here we got this brain in it the brain the classic brain in a jar you yeah. know it's uh, is it the amigo i don't know is that amigo <laughs> um yeah i i got to play actually um because my uh my uh academy groups they were kind of staggered a little bit and i wanted to hit them all at the same point so some of them were moving a little bit quicker and i decided to give them a very short encounter in this haunted forest um oh that uh because i was like well you know no one will see you time travel here because it's haunted great okay and that seemed like an easy thing and then this book showed up and i was like okay all right we're gonna make it really haunted there's a creature in there called the yeah. relentless slasher and it's supposed to just be like jason freddy style you know um that monster is beautifully written to be like terrifying tear a party apart for two rounds and then the fight's over it's incredible like it's a design yeah. style that i really really like rather than a huge hit mm -hmm. point sponge um this creature is deadly and i totally recommend you checking it out and trying it on unsuspecting players yeah yeah um all right well uh are you ready to talk about your next little uh little bit of review goodness i am actually uh oh my gosh but i'm just still thinking about that book that book is so good oh um, well then i can go back to the book those are my top we, tips we, get we that can talk book. about it <laughs> if you like horror get, get that, that book, book. <laughs> all right yeah no i'm all ready. right are you ready here we go are you ready i, I mean we're already there uh we have there it is there speaking it is. of horror uh, <laughs> yeah, speaking of horror, uh, I got a chance to play The Shining, the Coded Chronicles game, uh, Escape from the Overlook Hotel by The Op Games. This game was, I, I'm really interested in escape room style games, uh, and this one in particular because I have specifically written puzzles for the Overlook Film Festival when they were at Timberline Lodge in Portland. And so oh, this, this game kind of called to me in a lot of ways. Um, it is wild. Um, we're going to see a couple of pictures in here, I think, but uh, but definitely I wanted to to just give you a, a rundown about how it looks, how it works. I, of course, am going to avoid any spoilers. Um, I will tell you right at the start, watch The Shining like right before you play this game, I think. That'll, that'll kind of get you in the mindset because it certainly drops you right in to the mayhem. Um, this game... Uh, uh, which, which version yeah. of The Shining? Because, you know, there's, there's a sci-fi, like mini series version and with the guy from wings what? and then what there's which version the, the, <laughs> then there's, there's, there's then there's, there's that one. one there's that one with the guy who played the joker or something in some movie what? and then there's oh it was it was it like a book or something too i i feel like you are uh <laughs> huh. i feel like you're gonna have a fight on your hands in about a 15 minutes <laughs> <laughs> uh, this book was this this box is really cool opening it up i wasn't sure what to expect um so i'll tell you a little bit about the coded chronicles system that you're going to see um there are going to be some rooms you're going to have some like character standees to move you around a board and uh as well as some some constant you know clue cards and these these chronicles um the chronicles are basically a choose your own adventure style set of books um but the only way you get to choose one of the, the things in here is by finding it on the board. So you'll see like the there's a journal for Wendy Torrance here. Numbers are a thousand to, you know, 1999. Um, if I come up with a number through my actions of the game within that range, 
I'm going to check out that entry in the corresponding book. Um, I've got two books here for Wendy, and I've got one for Danny, uh, you know, whose special ability mm -hmm. is the ability to shine and, uh, and see things here in the hotel that are pretty cool. Um, the way the game works. All right. You have your standee. Yes. This is wild. This was wild to me. How are you going to put all this together? Um, your standee has two abilities on it. Look and uh, for uh, for Wendy, use, you know, actually use objects. And for Danny, it is shine. Um, those actions come with numbers. Um, I think I want the next picture, maybe. <laughs> um as, uh, as we're taking a look here, we'll see that basically the rooms on the board that you were moving around on, right? Here's our, here's our board, here's our, our items, here's some stuff. Um, there's different parts of the board that have three digit numbers on them. And depending on how you want to interact with them, uh, if Wendy looks, you put a one at the front. If Wendy uses, you put a two at the front. You know, if Danny oh. uses shine, you put a four at the front. And so you just get build these four digit numbers look in the corresponding section and you find out what happens. The rules in there will tell you like get some new cards, like draw card seven or, or move to this other section and read it or uh, open one of the many envelopes that come with the game. This game has 11 secret envelopes that will add new rules and add new things. There's a picture of the, the mechanic right there in action. That's, that's Wendy using um, 101 from the uh, the kitchen which mm -hmm. is right at the start of the game so that's there's no spoilers there you start in the kitchen <laughs> um i love this uh it was so good because it meant that i had tons and tons of possible objects to use if i want to use one of the items on something in the game it tells you how to do that it did mean i had to make keep track of a lot of numbers as the game played uh and i would recommend if there are important things you want to remember like important four digit numbers write them down somewhere just so you can go back to them and look them up in the books when it comes down to it this is a book that you can package right back up and uh, send to someone else you can't play it again you know the whole story but uh but you could give it to someone else you just have to tape the envelopes down again um but oh my gosh i loved it <laughs> so and, and there's the envelopes. Um, so with this game, you, you said it would be good to watch uh, the the shining beforehand. How yeah. how much does that knowledge really come to play in the game? I will say, um, right at the start of the game, like I said, you're, you're kind of dropped in um, to to action. Right, stuff is happening because you got to do it. This is an escape game. We can't have a lot of prologue before yeah. that. You got to escape. Um, and so I, I found myself like as I sat down to play it, because I did not watch the movie right beforehand, um, thinking about like, okay, where are we? What scene? Okay, okay, all right, there we go, and okay. moving forward, um, which I liked a lot. Uh, there are tons and tons of direct references. I mean, they turned the movie into a choose-your-own-adventure game, basically. Um, that you're going to mm -hmm. do in kind of, you know, in many ways, in the order that you want to, you're in, the investigation is kind of up to you. Uh, there's no linear path. I mean, there is. It's built in. Yeah. Like, if I want to go and investigate the Colorado room, great. I'm going to walk in there and I'm going to look around. If I want to go look at the kitchen or the front office, I'm going to go in there. Um, at some point, one of those four digit numbers is going to make me do something, give me a puzzle to work on or something like that or an activity. And that's going to kind of push me forward. Uh, it was, oh my gosh, there were some moments where I was like, what am I supposed to do? Because I'm looking around and I didn't get the right number set up. And so that was mm -hmm. a little frustrating. But once I got it, it was like, oh, perfect. Now we're moving. Um, there is a picture here. And this, this is, there is, of course, there's a breaking through the door scene. Um, of course there is. <laughs> um, uh, it was, it was just a beautiful experience. And I liked it so much more than a lot of the escape room games that I have played. Um, a lot of the ones where you're okay. just flipping through a deck and tearing cards up and stuff like that, because the narrative is so strong. Which, okay. You know, okay. So yeah. So, so it's like big bonus. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. And it, so, so just to kind of clarify, it's good to have seen the movie ahead of time, but not necessary. Like, not necessary. Right? You could still have I a good not. time playing the game. <laughs> so say, you know, like like our guest Brian, he hates horror, so he's probably never seen this movie. And um, <laughs> you know, cuz 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 he's a big scaredy pants. And uh, <laughs> so for him, he could still sit down and play this game. 
Right, right, right. Man, I, yeah, heard, I heard those knuckles crack from here across wow. the country. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to referee the battle that is to come in this interview. Just so you know, I'm walking away. <laughs> yeah, the, these uh, these books are are packed. There's tons of pages. There's tons of information. You were going to feel like you were watching the movie by by seeing all this. Um, and uh, and it's really cool because of that. It's really really cool. Um, I recommend you check yeah. it out. There's also the Scooby-Doo game, which I also have, and I will be playing that one not solo, but I figured I would take this one on my own and enjoy this horror experience yeah. by myself. It was really fun. I, yeah. And I do, mm -hmm. I do. Uh, uh, we were talking about your product photography uh, before the show, and I think you did a fantastic job. Like this specific image, I was like, "That's mm. that's really solid." At first, I thought you stole it from the site or something, but then I was like, "Oh no, no. Oh, wait, I recognize some of those that's, games." Like, that's my squirrel. I recognize that glass squirrel. Holder. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like one. <laughs> <laughs> how many squirrel 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 magnifying glasses exist period i, Two, I don't know how many of them know. are yours all right uh, all right all of them all of them all of them now all, of them. <laughs> <laughs> all i have to do is find all one right, designer well, um yeah is there anything more that you wanted to chat about this game before uh, um I go see if our, our guest is still awake. <laughs> I will tell you uh, my my <laughs> other bit um, about this one. There is a pretty pretty rigorous hint system in here. Feel free to use it. Um, there is like a scoring uh -huh. system as well in the end because you know while you win, the deal is did you win good enough that Kubrick would be excited? You know, um, and mm -hmm. uh, and that's kind of a cool addition. I do like it. Um, the more you ask for hints, like the 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 lower your score gets. That's the way most of these work. Um, but other than that, it, it was two acts. There is a an envelope to kind of save your progress and a restart if you want to play the second act another time. Uh, both of the acts take about ninety minutes to play. Um, doesn't matter how many players you have because it's not a two player game. Just because there's two standees, everyone at the table is free mm -hmm. to move those around. And the Scooby Doo game is going to have five standees, so you know doesn't matter how many nice. people you have. Awesome. You're all reading kind of one of the books at a time, you know, out loud. So that process could take a little while. Um, bring a magnifying glass. It helped in this one. I expect it will help in the Scooby-Doo one. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I would say also on a puzzle note, the puzzles okay. are not puzzles are not puzzle hard. You know, um, you, you're not doing something that is outside your scope. I'll tell you that right now. Um, that would kind of get in the way of the cool narrative rush of playing this game. So um mm -hmm. puzzles are manageable and is they, it, they're it, good you're going to be able to handle this and that's this the scooby-doo and the shining are the same company asks uh, yeah. d20 monkey in the chat it, it is the next one in this <laughs> coded chronicles series which i think is really cool awesome. um i think cool. it is the escape room style that i i've been looking for in one of these boxes i i love a big narrative uh -huh. to keep it all moving together and uh yeah i recommend it yeah, I'm not a huge uh, puzzle or escape room person, um, mm -hmm. but uh, this this is this is the kind of situation that I could see myself sitting down and going through this, even going through it by myself and playing that kind of game to kind of explore it a little bit more. Because yeah. I do admit, probably some of my trepidation towards puzzles, towards escape rooms, is that I've not really done very many, and when I've done them, they've just not been uh, my kind of experience. But uh, maybe I would get more out of this kind of situation. So Absolutely. I'm excited to try one of those out. I would also recommend, I mean, not <laughs> not in the Coded Chronicles series, uh, Box One is one of the best escape room games I've ever played. Um, I think this okay. one is, is right up there. Um, yeah, they're both fun. I like them. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. Um, yeah. And then I guess if, that, if you're good there, uh, we'll good. Uh, see if the guest is ready in the green room. And the uh, bell to ding. We, uh, do we have a big time? building? <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear I hear some knuckles cracking. So uh, let's go ahead and go to our guest. Thank you, Rich. Uh, joining me now on the show is a beautiful gentleman that I have known for well over 10 years. And um, little did he know that a part of the reason I invited him on the show this very weekend was to thank him for a service that he did almost exactly five years ago. Uh, so five years ago, me and my wife got married, and uh, we had a fantastic person who uh, officiated the wedding for us, and that was one Mr. Brian D20 Monkey Patterson. Ma Welcome to the show, my it, friend. Thank you for having me. Was it was it five almost five years ago? It was five years ago yesterday. Yesterday was my fifth year wow. anniversary. Wow, <laughs> that is. 
I'm I'm having one of those weird adult moments where you're trying to remember a thing uh-huh. and you're parsing it and it's still your wedding still feels like it happened maybe like two years ago. Right. To me. Yeah. <laughs> Not and that's but that's awesome. That was man, it was a fun weekend. Uh, yeah. It's the only the only wedding I've officiated where I got to use power tools. So yeah. Yeah. That uh-huh. was uh that was yeah. awesome. Yeah. I had to wear I, I, had to wear safety gear. So you yeah. had to wear safety goggles. Um, I, I am mm-hmm. still, I'm still a little hurt that you didn't let me use my hammer to uh, hammer in the nails. Uh, but uh, you know, I, I having a sledgehammer I, may have been a mistake. I was approached <laughs> prior to the ceremony and warned um, by people who will remain nameless. Uh, some of them may be in close proximity to you right now, uh, and said, "No, no." No, 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 no! You shouldn't let that happen. No, don't don't let him have a hammer. No, 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 no. no. So this is also part of your job. You're you're officiating this wedding and making sure he doesn't maim himself during the ceremony. So yeah, yeah. After which, the ceremony, apparently, they had what him... I learned, oh, yeah. which what I learned a few moments ago, apparently, if that had happened, I would have fainted from the sight of blood because my aversion to horror movies is so oh, strong yeah. that I. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you would have fainted from mm-hmm. the blood. You know, they they did Just let right me have there. a right there. They did let me have a whip and a jingo tower afterwards. So uh, that was a ton of that fun. is true. But um, true. but for yeah. real, but for real. Uh, Aside from your version to horror, uh, thank you for joining me on the show today. Uh, D20 Monkey, Brian Patterson, is the amazing mind behind the D20 Monkey comic, which has wrapped up it's all he is mm-hmm. also the mastermind behind a campaign set in Carthoon, as well as a fantastic just graphic artist you can see his stuff everywhere uh especially on his patreon True. we want to make sure and send people over there so we check out his patreon um oh thank you but one yes, thing i did please, hear please about recently and i want to talk a little bit about it is uh jasper game day you did something awesome for the jasper game day i did they they were nice enough to approach me and they were recruiting, basically recruiting DMs from from Twitter and kind of all over. Uh, I, I guess the best way I can put it, known online DMs who yeah. who are running campaigns and have have involvement in the tabletop industry in some form or fashion. You know, between doing illustration, I've done cartography for companies and and a few other things here and there. And they were nice mm-hmm. enough to come to me and say, "Hey, uh, we would like to auction your body for." Uh, a good cause and that being just they wanted me to run a session they wanted to sell table well seats at the table for people to uh to bid on and, and run some D and i love running D. I run mm-hmm. how many campaigns now three i think is what i'm running right now with the oh, occasional nice. one shots here and there i'm living the dream man yeah. uh, but it was great we 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 had people you know we had those seats sell out pretty fast and I was able to run that session last night and just, just a good time for a great cause. It's a, I love what Jasper's game day is doing. That's I, I love specifically. I love how seemingly fast by comparison. I love how quickly that has taken root in the community and how many people are the best way I can phrase it. I love that the influence and the people who are signal boosting that, Mm-hmm. is everyone from people who only have a, maybe a few followers and, and not a ton of influence in the industry to people who are considered leaders of industries, I guess, you know, there's everyone has a place to help boost that signal. And I love it. And it's just, they're doing amazing work and mm-hmm. it was, uh, it's a great cause. So yeah. And just for I'm those probably who... fumbling, I'm probably fumbling their mission <laughs> statement right there, but yes, it's a great cause. Not like yeah, it, so. no, no. Uh, yeah. And, and just, just for clarification. Um, so what Jasper's game day is about, and this is directly from their mm-hmm. uh, site, um, is about preventing, uh, or, or raising awareness about, uh, suicide and, 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 mm-hmm. and helping with suicide prevention. Um, it is a really good charity. It is, is definitely something to, uh, to keep, keep checking out on and, and seeing what kind of things they have, what kind of events they have coming up. Uh, their next one, they're mm-hmm. going to be at concurrent um, online in 14 days. Uh, but yeah, it mm-hmm. is a really, a really good charity, really good uh, just thing to keep your, your eyes on. And um, I'm sad that I, I, I missed out on uh, joining in this year, but uh, hopefully next year I'll be able to snag one of those seats and uh, play some games with some friends who are uh, 
doing it for a good purpose um mm-hmm. that's i i have <laughs> I've, I've made that pledge i'm doing the same i've i want to offer more table spaces next year mm-hmm. uh, i want to offer any sk- anything in my skill set that i can offer for it i will and knowing that it's coming i will i will have some dollars put aside to pledge towards getting in some friends games or people that mm-hmm. i've always wanted to play with and never had a chance yeah i will be jumping all over that yeah so. i I I do have to say that you know, and not that this charity came from the pandemic that we were we we were experiencing, mm-hmm. where we're on the hopefully the tail end of. Um, one of the things that that I've really seen is is a lot more community outreach for charities for people people helping people. Uh, this is definitely something mm-hmm. that I've seen on Twitch a lot. Uh, my mm-hmm. I'm in a DJ community, and. You know, we're just constantly raising money uh, for for different charities, and I've seen it in the the actual play community. And so, so hearing more things about that is just fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. That wasn't Agreed. really leading to a question, but uh, it, it it can kind of transition <laughs> to one. Uh, how how has how has the last year been for you, my friend? It has been. Uh, oh no, I did it every time I say it's been. Suddenly, it's no, oh, it's been. Uh, one way time so I have compulsive, compulsive, compulsively, I have to do it. I yeah, can't help yeah. myself. Um, <laughs> but I won't go further because of DMCA stuff. I won't go beyond that. Don't worry. <laughs> I won't start singing the rest of the song. Yeah. But the uh, the pandemic was was specifically the isolation was was a little well, it was weird for everyone. But I guess yeah. thinking back on it now, because like you said, hopefully we're getting to the point where things are starting to get to some sense of normalcy. You know, I've, I've done the thing. I think a lot of people who are vaccinated have done. I've, I've, I've d- thrown the test balloons. I've done the, okay, we're mm-hmm. going to go get a meal somewhere, you know, yeah. and let's see how this feels. And it's feeling a little more normal as it goes. But that year, because I already worked from home mm-hmm. here, you know, from this space, uh, the transition for a working environment, wasn't that difficult. The, the thing that got to me was because I work from home, the isolation really snuck up on me. Like before yeah. I knew it, it had been six or seven months. And I'm like, I haven't been around anyone. It's all been through this a space like this. Yeah. And suddenly it was eight months, nine months, a year. And I, <laughs> it's all good now, but I did learn in the course of that. I'm a person who's spent most of my life kind of romanticizing the idea of, you know, isolation, you know, seeing those movies where you're like, oh man, they're going to go stay at the Overlook mm-hmm. for six months just to write. That sounds amazing, <laughs> you know? Right. But I learned over the course of this year that I am not as m- quite as much of an introvert as I thought I was. Yeah. Like I've, I've learned there's a limit even for me. I need that social interaction. I need friends. I need to play D and D and video games with friends online has been awesome it quite frankly yeah. kept me sane i think mm-hmm. through most of it but i need that interaction I need to sit at a table look across from someone have some snacks you know laugh together hear the clatter of dice and yeah. you know i i need that so yeah that was i'm, I'm treating that as a positive i learned something mm-hmm. you know like a lot of us people learned how to make sourdough bread a lot of us learn things about ourselves, you know, yeah. over the course of that year. So absolutely, yeah. It was a yeah. I know. I know for a lot of people, and, and myself included, it was a, a big mental health journey. And you know, we mm-hmm. were talking about mental health, so I, I just thought I, I I'd touch on that a little bit. You know, for me, it was yeah. I I, I see myself in, as an extrovert. I I I had a horrible time going into you? this. <laughs> Look at my pretty face. Really? Look at me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Stop looking over there. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, so you've got a you've got a hotel bell. Just look at me. Look, look at, me. at me, everyone. Look at me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I, I I realized like, you know, I can do things on my own a little bit. Um, I feel much more secure. Like I, I started, I did that thing that uh, I didn't think I was ever going to do. I started going to therapy. Uh, yes, we mm-hmm. are both pretty. Thank you, uh, Calisandra. Um the and uh you. you know it, it yes you know start working on my mental health and in uh mm-hmm. with with uh with 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 therapy and it's been great and i um and and you doing the jasper's things just kind of brought it to my head that that we need to remember mm-hmm. like in our community of of nerdy gamers there's still a lot of 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 toxic masculinity around especially around things like 
doing stuff for yourself and taking care of yourself and yes. and, and and getting that 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 kind of mental help. Um, well, yeah. I mean, I I mean, that's the thing is, I I finally, and I'll totally cop to this is I spent most of my adult life kind of flirting with the idea of therapy, and I had people that I knew and trusted saying, "Hey, man, you you probably should talk to somebody on a regular basis." And mm -hmm. for my own reasons, I just never really did. And uh, a few years ago, I finally, I finally did. And mm -hmm. boy, how do you talk about regret? And I don't mean because I did it. I mean, just, I didn't do it sooner. Yeah. And it has, it's one of the, it is one of the most rewarding, fulfilling and challenging things I've ever done, yeah. but I'm glad I've done it. I'm glad I'm still doing it. And the, my takeaway or one of my big takeaways from all of it has been, Take it as someone who has historically been pretty good at wearing a mask and smiling, you know, mm -hmm. for for people and putting on that. The, the thing that most of us do in a lot of social situations where you you put on that mask, you oh, everything's fine. You know, I, it has made me I'm hyper aware of it now mm -hmm. and always remembering that the person that you're talking to just because they're behaving a certain way, they're smiling, they're laughing. You don't know what's going on with them. Mm -hmm. You know, there could be something very serious in the background. And like you said, it, there's this whole toxic masculinity in this, uh, this whole, oh, you just need to get over it. You just need to power through it. You know, <laughs> just, you know, pull, pull yourself up. You'll be fine. You know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, you know, that's crap. <laughs> right. Well, that's, I, that's just total crap. Exactly. Well, you, you know, the funny thing about that phrase even is that it was originally intended as someone doing something idiotic, right? Oh, there's Joe mm. trying to pull him up himself up by his bootstraps. And then somehow it got mm -hmm. twisted to like, you have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps to, you know, and go take care of being manly. You, look at these arms. Yeah. Do they look like I till fields? No, I, I am not a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> they you may not till fields but i i see you i see you spinning many turntables on a regular oh, yeah. basis you know, yep all you know. the time <laughs> i see that happening but yeah. it's i guess i guess that's the whole thing for me was just learning that or not even really learning about just being reminded that mm -hmm. despite what people show you in social spaces everyone has something going on yeah. and being being sensitive or or trying to be empathetic, I think is the right word for that mm -hmm. moment. If it's wrong, I apologize, but trying to be empathetic enough to pick up signals at the very least from your friends, people, you know, and checking in, you know, more often kind of being the person that just quietly over here says, Hey, what's going on with you? Are you okay? Yeah. And giving that person the freedom to say, no, I'm fine, but you asked. And yep. I, that's something I tell friends often is, the only reason I really pushed to get into therapy was because enough people said, Hey, are you okay? Maybe you should talk to someone. Yeah. And I finally listened. So I, I don't think that's wasted effort at no. all. That's it's, it's uh, to me, it's a scorecard, you know, that, yeah. that, that compounds over time and eventually you never know, you know, there may be something going on. And... Yeah. Anyway, anyway, yeah. I would yeah. bounce around this subject forever. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, uh, I'm I'm glad to 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 hear all these things. Um, you know, and we yeah. were, we were talking like before we got on. We we're like, ah, man, it's been too long since we've talked. So so we want to make sure and, mm -hmm. and and keep doing it. But before we uh, we move on to this next bit, uh, let's let's talk about something a little bit more fun. Uh, I have been having a ton of fun uh, over on your site right now. There is a playtest document for a D and D five E class called the Mage Bound. Uh, for those there who are is. familiar with Kath Carthoon, you may know a little bit about it, but uh, but for those who aren't, I, I have the creator of Carthoon right here with me. So tell me a little bit about the Mage Bound. So the Mage Bound is a a spe arcane spellcasting class that came about through the the lore of Carthoon itself. Over Carthoon's existence since basically since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, every you talk to every DM, nine out of ten are going to tell you about their homebrew setting and or one of the homebrew settings that they've worked on. And <laughs> I, I can feel the head nods uh -huh. across, across, you know, everywhere, all the nerds. Yeah, just across the multitudes. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm no different. I had mine and just over the years I worked on it and it, it kind of slowly developed over time. But 
for me, the mage bound is I love, I love wizard sorcerers. I love the arcane classes we know, but, and this, this is not a, I didn't tread completely brand new ground here. Cause I know there's other, other fiction out there that's touched on it at some point. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I love the idea of arcanists who are physically through magic bound to elementals where, you know, an elemental is, is primed. The, the host is primed and through ritual, they are bound together where there are two individuals. They become one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and through that, they gain, you know, spell casting powers and their person, their appearance will change. Their personality will change. We're in most times uh, in terms of like self referential things. It's no longer I, it's we. Mm-hmm. And I've always described them in, in RP as there are two voices that speak. And one, because I thought it was cool. And <laughs> as I've gotten older, I realize there's, you can have so many deeper layers and meanings behind that, especially mm-hmm. from the role-playing standpoint. Yeah. And with Carthoon being finished and published and 5e being the game that I love to play the most, it was just time. It was time to finally put mechanics behind that. So uh, mm-hmm. I started tapping at the class, which like, like we were talking about beforehand, boy, howdy. I, <laughs> I've made my share of content for Dungeons and Dragons over the editions yeah. and over the years. I've, I've written professionally for, for fantasy flight when they were doing it and other things like that, mm-hmm. but writing classes from the ground up. Yeah. That is a whole thing. So, right. but it's, but it's been fun. I've enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And you definitely had a little bit of a, a, a touch in, in, in building classes for D and D with the um, college of metal, which is a gold bestseller now over on. Yeah. Just learn uh, that today. That's awesome. It, yeah, over over on uh, the DMs Guild, so definitely go check that out. And um, yeah, no, that's 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 pretty rad. Yeah, um, I mean, check it out and roll up a bard because everybody should play a bard. <laughs> Every, everybody should <laughs> play once. a bard at least once. And if yeah. you're going to be the person who kind of kind of drags your feet and says, "Oh, bards, uh, bards, uh," mm-hmm. you know, whatever, fun, roll a bard and go into the College of Metal. <laughs> there any any preamble you may have had in your head about how effective a bard can or cannot be or how a bard should be presented in a fantasy setting which there is no right or wrong way to do by the way mm-hmm. you know college of metal just hit I, power cords on loot and call lightning <laughs> it's great yeah you know i you know and that's that you know you bring that up about bards i typically will play a bard once in every edition and then decide not mm-hmm. to play it again and that is because of not because of the mechanics, not because of the play style, but because of the 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 preconceived notions of what a bard is, and and me mm-hmm. not wanting to fall into those tropes. Uh, in in, mm-hmm. in yeah, definitely the College of Metal. It, it, the Call of College of Metal, on the other hand, leans into those tropes in such an epic way that that mm-hmm. that 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 it becomes like explosive and badass. So uh, well, I mean, here's the thing. All right, I have a. I mean, it's it's not like a hot take or anything, but here's a yeah. Here's a, over the years, I've come to finally understand this. <laughs> tropes aren't always bad. No. Tropes are tropes for a reason, because they're a thing that has been used and done, and people went, I associate this with this. Mm-hmm. So if someone says, I'm rolling at my first bard, and they're wearing a cavalier hat with a feather out of it, and they're holding a rapier, and they're trying to sing all of their mm-hmm. spellcasting components, so awesome. be it. Yeah. Are you ha- are you having fun? Great. You know? Mm-hmm. Wait. Okay. Okay, in a different vein, are you telling me you're rolling up your 16th bard? Oh, you just want them to be L O Cool J. Awesome. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. You know, we're gonna we are gonna stat you up at some DD track suits and it's time to go. <laughs> right. You know? So yeah, no, there's I, no I, wrong I, way. There's no there, wrong way to bard. There is no wrong way to bard. Uh and uh I I'm I'm still just not a big bard player, but I love I love the bards at the table. Um, and it's just because my play style is, is different, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But of bars, and there's nothing wrong with I that. do like the college yeah. of metal a lot. So I think, I think people should check that out. It's, it's fun. It's especially fun. Like for me, like the, yeah, I was talking about the new, new campaign that I'm in with some friends, uh, that I know mm. from, from DJ, uh, Twitch and, um, 
and that's the perfect kind of bard for that kind of group right you mm -hmm. when you when you look at these things you look at like you know the the bard the the mage bound um those those won't fit in every campaign but they will fit into campaigns that are that that they fit in uh, you know it's like you talk mm -hmm. about the mage bond it's for Car carthoon of course it'd fit great in a carthoon campaign uh but would it fit well in uh Eberron? yes absolutely perfect for Eberron. Mm -hmm. would it fit well in dragonlands well you know maybe maybe not would it fit well in dark sun no absolutely not no <laughs> no no and if and even if you did like i i mean i think a lot of us try not to be the kind of DMs who our first instinct is to say no, yeah. you know, but in that moment, I think that's a, okay, hang on. Let's talk this out for a moment. Yeah. You know, okay. G pitch me. G tell me why this works. Pitch yeah. it. You know? Exactly. Like. And if they have a decent, if, if between us, we can work out a decent idea for why that, why that character exists in dark mm -hmm. sun, then sure. Let's do it. Well, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm with, I'm are Mage going to work in say in bunnies and burrows? Maybe not. You know, I don't know. Oh, I want to play bunnies and burrows. Do you know how badly I want to play bunnies and burrows? I desperately want to play bad. that game. Uh, uh, very rich, bad, very bad. Rich, <laughs> rich, rich. Where's... I, I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking through the power of the internet into the green room. Don't <laughs> shake your head like that. Don't hide. <laughs> your hands are not hiding you. No. All right, Rich. Uh, we have another campaign. We need a bunnies and burrows. We need. Uh, oh, what was the other one? We're, oh, we need sliders through the the dark realms. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. That book what is other... fantastic, bro. Oh, so and that good, book right? is fantastic. It's so it's good. so good. It's so. Good. I finally last night I was reading uh, High Watch. I'm pivoting back to your review section for a second. I uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I read. I was reading through it last night, but I read through specifically the section about creating your own dark lords mm -hmm. and domains and and the whole. Th it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Oh, it, I so, love it. So, yes, bunnies and burrows. Run it. Bunnies and burrows. I I do want to. Uh, yeah, going back to the reviews again. I want to touch on one more thing, and this is the shining. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah. gonna let it slide, but here no, we are. No, okay. no, we're right. we're coming back because I I have opinions. Uh, I one I don't I, I I didn't care for the book, so we'll we'll just get that out of the way. Uh, I think Jack Nicholson that that one is great, fantastic. I love Kubrick, uh, but I also mm -hmm. really enjoy the one from Sci-Fi with the Wings guy. Like they are two different variations on it, uh, and I think they're both both great for their own reasons. Um, I just it's I felt... if here's a, here's the way I look at it is and this and and I'm in a rare moment not going to you know jokingly come at you about this. <laughs> it's the truth of it is is this is if you love the book. The sci-fi version is for you. It's closer to the book. It is. If you love Kubrick and you love the more scary aspects of The Shining, then the Sh Jack Nicholson's film is for you. Because yeah. I watched it's, and if you haven't watched it, if you're a fan of that movie at all, and I think most fans have already seen it, but if you haven't, I recommend it. Is watch The Shining, mm -hmm. play, <laughs> play Escape from the Overlook Hotel, yeah, and then watch the documentary Room Two Three Seven. Right. Room 237 is a fantastic documentary. So good. It just, it showed me within the first 30 minutes that I had never truly watched The Shining, even though I had seen it in double digits at this point. Mm -hmm. um, some of the things that they were picking out and talking about some of the themes and hidden messages they, they speculated. Um, it's just fascinating. But learning that Kubrick <laughs> basically didn't like Stephen King yeah. and went... I'm just going to make the movie I want to make with this material. Mm -hmm. No, there'll be no, there'll be no living topiary walking around in this movie. No, no, no. Nah. <laughs> nah. No. Um, but I, I love that movie. The shining is the shining is my, in terms of horror, which PS, I do love horror and you know yeah. that. Uh, oh, I know. I, I, uh, the shining is up there. The shining is if we're, if you were doing top threes and all that shining is easily up there. So, yeah, yeah, fantastic I, movie. Yeah, I, 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 I would definitely put it up there. I, I don't know top three, but pretty freaking close. It's really it, both. Ver I like both versions. The Kubrick run is definitely mm -hmm. horror, and it, and it feels great. Um, related from DJ Regular, the director's cut of Doctor Sleep whips, in his opinion, uh, or in their opinion, you know, I haven't, uh, very I haven't much reconciles the book and the movie's uh, respective existences. So I have not watched it yet, but I'm gonna have to check that out. 
And uh, with that, thank you so much for joining mm. us. You're going to stick around for the uh, the building of the the adventure, which means you're not really going anywhere. We're not cutting. I'm just doing the last few things is make sure to follow at D20 Monkey on the Twitters, as well as the other social medias, as well as go check out D20 Monkey, that the co- web comic that the, the, the comic is complete. Um, I'm waking, waiting for my deluxe hardback no, uh, version of it. Hopefully that'll be soon. I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm, I'm working on it working yeah. on it uh, <laughs> patience then, patience uh, sorry and then make sure and go uh back uh his patreon i believe the links are in the chat and dj regular has been fantastic about getting those up for us and with that thank you dj <laughs> with that let's pop on over to our building scene where we will build an adventure and uh try to influence rich to write even more campaigns for us to play Oh, I've so, got to wait for him to come back. Bunnies, I'm ready. Uh, bunnies and burrows. I'm, <laughs> hear me I'm out, making Rich. a list. No, 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 Rich. Rich, hear me out. I'm going to make your life okay. easy. I'm going I'm to make oh. your life so easy right now. This is so easy. I can't believe that we haven't said this yet. And it's, so it writes easy. itself. We take and you run a one shot <laughs> because that's all it's going to be. You run a bunnies and so easy is right. It's 100% right. You write a Bunnies and Burrows one shot set <laughs> in Ravenloft. <laughs> wow. Wow. I think that's a perfect combination uh, because everybody would just be I, like, ah. <laughs> I, I, look, sometimes my own genius staggers me. I, I under, <laughs> and I'm assuming that the, the, the stunned silence on your faces, the, the looks of disbelief. Why has no one thought of this sooner? Oh no! Right? Oh no! I'm going. To, I'm. I'm going to break you, Brian, because the Exploration Society uh, has some adventurers in it, and uh, <laughs> Chef Alberti is sending them through a portal. <laughs> oh my gosh! When they uh, when they wow. appear on the other side, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they are bunnies, and they are in Ravenloft. I just Boom. in all right in my head I'm imagining what would happen oh. if you took the Muppets into a horror movie and yes. that's <laughs> kind of like that's where my brain's at right now. <laughs> well, here's the thing: like we all know, we know the classic formula for Ravenloft in most cases, at least it, it, especially the way it was originally intended. Is mm-hmm. we are people doing a thing, going from point A to point B. These myths come, and now we're somewhere we don't understand. We don't know the language. Right. Why is it so creepy? Why is it so creepy? You know, Mm -hmm. this also falls into that line. Yes, there's a you're sent through a portal or the mist come and suddenly your bunnies on the farm in Barovia of a madman. And we just have to survive till dawn. Oh, perfect. Because he's pissed at us. But we are eating his crops. He wants us dead. (laughs) Okay, this is great, because not only do we have like a setting and and exactly what's going on, you're just you're defining a dark lord already. Yes. The farmer. Okay. <laughs> what is his domain? That one farm. What does he care about? His cabbages. But my right? cabbages. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what about my cabbages? <laughs> I love that you're actually writing it down. That's the best. Oh, oh I, yeah. I mean Oh no. This is our this is our adventure for today. This is what we're writing. All right. So okay. the PCs, uh, they're bunnies. They are in a burrow. Uh, the burrow, uh, the burrow <laughs> fills. Uh, oh, actually, a rabbit burrow is the other one. Uh, but we're gonna go with Warren. The Warren fills with mist, and when they, uh, when the mist clears, clears, they are in Barovia, and very hungry. In fact. <laughs> So here, here, so the PCs uh, for this adventure need to A, let's, let's make a list. They need to uh, eat. They need to eat and steal mm-hmm. food. They mm-hmm. need to uh, avoid the farmer mm-hmm. and survive until dawn. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's. So, so my first question. 
I don't know. The, I don't. I don't know the format, so I don't want to jump the gun on stuff. No, you. So you, you we're no, doing the so format is. We'll, <laughs> all right, we're doing good. All right. So here, here's my first question. Okay. So based on the scenario that I have half jokingly now, and now we're in it. So now we're yeah. in it. Yeah. Now we're so, in it. So, uh huh. So if the farmer's already upset that the, his cabbages is being eaten and his crops are being ruined, yeah, we know it's not us because we just got here. What's really yeah. doing it? Oh yeah. That now sees that now sees us as a food source. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like That's that. Upset. I like that because I'm I'm looking into the the building a dark Who lord stuff is? on D and D Beyond, mm-hmm. and one of the things that uh, that every dark lord needs to have is a fatal flaw. And I kind of like one of them, which is I would rather be righteously angry at problems than solve them, which is exactly what this <laughs> sounds like. The farmers got a problem. They could just solve it, but no, <laughs> they're yeah. going to be angry at everything instead. <laughs> angry at everything. Yes. Yeah. You, you have to this, dodge this the farmer. This could be played in 5e, oh, yeah. World of Darkness. And then you have to go solve the problem. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, 2d20. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a lot of cool systems we could do with fate. I mean, there's oh, a lot sure. of cool systems we could do with this. Uh, fate, fate, uh, honey heist. Honey heist, yeah. Sure. All right, so, uh, roll for, yes. Roll for bunny. Roll for bunny. Oh, I love that. <laughs> roll for bunny. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, so, 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 so the Warren appears in Barovia. Uh, it, apparently, it appears over another Warren that has gone off to another area. And so, mm-hmm. how do we, how do we introduce the PCs to the setting? How do we like like it's a one shot so they kind of know what's going on already, but 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 how do we mm-hmm. get the characters involved? They wake up hungry, and they see uh, you know they see the light going out, uh, as night falls. Right. It's yeah, night falls. Maybe it's colder than where they were. Uh, maybe even maybe even a complete change of environment. Maybe their yeah. warrant was somewhere was somewhere you know more somewhere more barren and warmer and yeah. now mm-hmm. here we are in the fog cold shrouded mist of barovia yeah so i am imme- my danger sense is immediately pained in that moment i think right um yeah uh, the warren has a few extra twists and turns mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. than it had before cool. Oh yeah, yeah. Fiasco, uh, a fiasco game with bunnies. Yep, we can a tell fiasco you. game would work. Uh, maybe we're oh. seeing the remains of other bunnies who did oh. not fare so well. Yeah, I, I kind of almost imagine this starting just outside of the farm, letting the farm become this like, oh my goodness, salvation is at hand. Um, because mm-hmm. we're out in the forest, we're trying oh. to get food from out here, and it's just not working. Bunny mm-hmm. skeletons everywhere. Uh, yeah, so 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 they poke their heads uh, out of the warren to look around, and they see a giant uh, farmhouse. Farm, yeah, let's go farmhouse. Uh, and then, so like all of this, like you know, we 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 can expand it, but the, all of this could be, you know, be, that could be all be box text. And then, you know, the first scene mm-hmm. is they are over, you know, they're they're looking at the farm uh at the farm and they see uh both food they hear the howl of a dog and they see a farmer with a uh you know like a sickle and a lantern uh yeah, looking that, I mean, to lo- me, looking around there we go and that's yeah, our opening that's to me to me yeah that's to me that's the thing is you start with we're here oh no something terrible's happened mm-hmm. You you emerge from the warren and the woods behind you are so terrifying mm-hmm. that the farmhouse is salvation. And then as you're making your way to the south, the farmhouse to oh we're gonna somewhere safe to hide till the sun comes up. You realize the farmer inside the farmhouse is a maniac, you know, mm-hmm. right? Uh, with with sickle and I love the idea of the dog. I love yeah. the dog being the foil. You know, yes. <laughs> here's 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 my pitch. There's something really weird and wrong supernaturally with the dog. The dog is the one who's been eating the cabbages. Mm-hmm. Uh, the dog is the culprit the entire time. Uh, uh. <laughs> the dog is an easy uh, that's pitch. Yeah. yeah, eating and it's burying. a one shot. It needs to be easy. You know? No, okay. no. I, I just mean that the farmer is not willing to like deal with the dog, right? I mean, you don't. Right. Yeah, we're leaning. We're no, leaning back into your, your righteous. Friend. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I don't want to fix the problem. I just just you know. angry. 
Uh, oh my gosh i love this because they i mean the the folks coming in like maybe they just they hear the dog they see the farmer the farmer's in the distance maybe there's like a cornfield over there you know something else the mm -hmm. dog seems to be the threat right and so they're sneaking in like grabbing mm -hmm. food and that's when the farmer turns and we get to see you know exactly what 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 is going on with the farmer maybe or is it just the dog do you think only the dog has some sort of monstrous transformation going on well or i the think farmer we have well? to decide if has the land twisted both of them or is this more of like a cujo situation where the farmers oh i see the farmers yeah. have the farmers having a rough go but the dog the dog is the real dark lord of this mini domain <laughs> oh sorry i like that i like that let's see okay so here let's let's take a big jump uh, so I think like okay. the penultimate scene, the second to last scene, what we can do is, is that an encounter with the dog or the encounter with the farmer? Because I think one should lead to the other. Uh, is it right. the encounter with the dog or could it go either way, right? Is the encounter with the dog, like you succeed at that encounter and then the, the farmer shows up and then you have to escape the farmer somehow, or is it that you finally like trick the farmer and you, you defeat the farmer, however we decide to defeat that. And then you have to escape the dog. Um, you know, I, I I kind of think something like that would be a fun way to end it, where it's like, oh, mm -hmm. well, now we we've we've and and maybe it's yeah, you're not defeating these things, it's outwitting these things is is the way it's that you're gonna survive. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. all right, so we've outwit the farmer, we've uh, locked him in the bathroom of the farmhouse, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, so so we've we're, we're we're making our way out, we're trying to get back to our warren. We see a light at the end of the uh, the clearing, so we're racing there, but now we have to beat the the this this dog that seems to have grown in size and has red glowing eyes or yeah something, right? there you go mm -hmm. so you almost get you yeah. almost get that phase that phased encounter or fight where you yeah. go from there was an initial encounter with the dog in the field going to the house mm -hmm. we got into the house thinking we were safe from the dog we've dealt now we have to deal with the farmer mm -hmm. and like you said we've we've outwitted the farmer and we think okay we're feeling pretty clear here the dog can't get to us there's another way for us to get out mm -hmm. and now the dog is here in his real form and we realize how serious this entire thing, because it wasn't serious before guys, come on. Right. You right, know, right, it was just, right. We were just, we were just bunnies having fun today. You know? Yeah. Now it matters. <laughs> oh, so, so, so at this point, I, I, I think, I think, uh, so, uh, you know, we, we, we have that opening scene and they're, they're trying to figure everything's out, but now the dog shows up for scene two, uh, and starts to chase the PCs. Uh, and they have to survive survive that they have to uh they have to uh survive and oh get into the house <laughs> to escape i which i love the, yeah, yeah then the farmer enters not too long after try uh trying to find the source of source of the noise mm -hmm. so uh and, and they can't and any time the, the the bunnies and and we don't need to write this bit, but any any time the bunnies um, uh, try to get get out of the house, their dog is right there. And the only way to evade the dog is to get the farmer uh, 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 trapped. Almost almost yeah. video game thinking, right? Let's see. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, I in my mind yeah, I can I see the, the rabbits running back into the warren, and as they're like moving through these tunnels like the dog's jaws just like burst through the ground and they're, yeah, you know, they're dodging yeah. and attacking it's, hit, yeah. it's, hit, it's hitting thin spots in the ground above uh -huh. so the, the <laughs> warren's collapsing behind them so they can't turn mm -hmm. back right and the dog is yeah. ever present yeah mm -hmm. and i like so, that uh, because you know after chase the... scenes are never are, are always difficult to make feel like a chase but i like that because now mm -hmm. we're now it's almost random rules while we're just traveling we can't we're not the dog's winning the chase. We're just protected. And so we realize yeah, we have to go back doing, to the house. That's a moment where visually, at least at least for my my DMing style at that point, that's when I make the quick, like, if I'm running this in roll 20 or doing it at a table, I've made that quick map of the overhead of the Warren tunnels mm -hmm. uh -huh. with, with, inter, with, with it re kind of hidden by the fog of war and they're getting to intersections and making choices of which way to go. Mm -hmm. And you're doing that whole dramatic chase, you know, that's that could be awesome yeah seriously yeah, i mean absolutely. it started as a joke but that could be fun that could be yeah. a lot of fun uh i i totally agree with what dj who has to say in the chat these uh one-shot brainstorms always make me want to play them or uh see the fruits of the labor yeah i agree i think i do think uh rich and i have been talking about 
putting some of these together in some form so that so that everyone can have access to them later. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe even writing out some am, of them as am, one shots. So <laughs> I'm pre-volunteering to play any of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, so I like good. this one as well right. because so far no licensing problems have come up in this one. So. None, not yeah, a one, not a one. We're, no, we, we, we've run into those issues before. We won't say the word Cujo, but, and we're fine. Yep, exactly. We were just mad dog. Yeah, mad dog. A, well, a, an, an evil, an evil crazed dog. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! All right, so uh, wow. let's let's think about uh, let's let's go to a whole new new page and let's uh, talk about the house. Right, right. Mm -hmm. What kind of what kind of encounters or objects or what kind of things are in this house? It's a good question. I mean, I'm trying to think like what's what what is the core fear that this domain is is created to uh, pursue? I suppose like what's is it is it just the are we scared of the creatures the overseers? Is that all? Is it just like authority? um yeah or is there something else going on is there something insidious it, it, that gets in here i think it's i think it's maybe maybe even looking at it from a from a real a real emotion and just like ravenloft does turning it up to 11 like mm -hmm. looking at it from a standpoint of this is a classic food chain predator prey scenario mm -hmm. so depending on how you have introduced people into this encounter if especially it could be helplessness um, or survival instincts, because especially if you're doing the thing where characters have stepped through portals and turned into this, you're suddenly all of your magical gear, your wonderful powers, all the things that you have leaned on for survival are now maybe almost non-existent. Yeah. Like your skill set's still there, but, mm -hmm. and they're not crutches, but the tools you use are gone. Yep. So there's that yeah. heightened sense of, survival maybe i don't know yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find the right word like for it but um mm. i'm almost envisioning like it, it, doing that is always great right i mean it throws a big loophole the the characters do not have access to those things i almost love the idea that here in the farmhouse there's like a mirror and when they head into it they see like this huge reversal like they are themselves and instead of the farmer mm -hmm. and the dog they see something else um Maybe mm -hmm. there's something in here they need to get, and that's going to help them get out in the end. But but I almost like them being like, oh, we got to go back into those bunny forms if we want to get out of here. <laughs> oh, there's, okay. I'll, I'll, okay, hearing that, that makes me immediately think. So we have to get around the house. So it's a big old mm -hmm. farmhouse. So the yep. crawl spaces in between the walls yeah. are wide. There's probably, yep. my, there's probably mouse tunnels in this place. Yeah. So we have to be bunnies to, to safely get around the house without drawing attention. And maybe the thing, yeah, I like that. The idea of seeing the truth of what's kind of going on here. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, it, depending on how much you want to play it up, it could even be a situation where truly the dog and the farmer, they're victims in their own way here. They've been corrupted by something in the house mm. that they never found because it's in the crawl spaces. Cause that's a classic horror thing. Yeah. yeah. There's something in the yeah. walls they never found. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just, it's, you know, layers upon layers of, you know, kind of dark manipulation and, and a mystery. And, you know, like we're talking about the end of running from the dog and everything. And mm -hmm. that's, that's the big actiony ending and it's awesome. But I think the way, depending on the group and how you present it, it could go very easily from the beginning being like the, the relentless slasher type where it's us against the farmer yeah. We're just having to survive yeah. him, you mm -hmm. know, but we have the tunnels, we have the crawl spaces to hide transitions into the mystery of what's going on here. How did we get here? And yeah. why are these people this way? Mm -hmm. And whether you break that or not, or you learn you can't break it. Now we just have to run. Yeah. So that you get to Absolutely. the dog and we're just trying to get, we're just trying to, you, maybe you learn in that moment, we have to survive till dawn. You know, yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. And and I think, you know, having like a small piece of mirror at some point breaks, a small piece of mirror uh breaks to mm -hmm. get down to their size and uh and the PCs can uh can use it to find the uh the not the true form but find out what 
all is being manipulated right mm-hmm. yeah uh, by by yeah. this evil uh and you know so so they'll have encounters in the walls with other rodents and things and they maybe some of them aren't completely twisted yet but maybe some of them are you know maybe they can build some ally a couple of allies as they're going through this yeah um and then you know maybe they get to the attic uh and uh they uh they 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 find this weird i don't know uh, uh arcane mark on the floor right and then they just have to, mm-hmm. once they and once they uh, destroy it, they know by the l- light that they can uh, make their way that they should make their way back to the burrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, man, I love the idea. I love the idea. Of just thinking about the things you can meet in the walls, right? Right. Uh, but it's from, uh, from 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 mice to rats to mm-hmm. you know something some larger creature that's in the attic. Yeah, you know, like a fox or a squirrel or something Mm -hmm. that's up there, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, like a a really cool squirrel uh, encounter. Right. Where maybe, (laughs) maybe, maybe maybe it's the squirrel, right? Maybe they, uh, uh, they, they, they are, they get into, they, uh, they get into an encounter uh, with the rats, with rats, and a squirrel comes and saves them. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it shows them how to oh, climb, yeah. and Ooh, yeah. and gives them uh, mm-hmm. gives them some insight into what is going on. Because I think they should be able to talk to a squirrel. They're rabbits, right? Yeah, I think that's. I oh, mean, sure. that should be just that should be a rule of the world. Is oh, are we all animals? We can talk to each other. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and, and I've this... seen enough <laughs> Disney films to know. I understand. <laughs> yeah, like in this, exactly. And this and this feels like the first um, combat encounter. Uh, and and I think that should be like shortly after they get into the house, uh, because mm. I, I I like the idea of having a patron or a guide or something like that to help PCs, especially in one shots. Uh, and mm-hmm. I think this this would be be a a great opportunity to use that squirrel as the patron. Right. Sure. So so are you thinking like when you emerge from the warrens and realize something has gone completely wrong? Yeah. Uh, so do you treat you treat the initial encounter with the first encounter with the dog or the farmer who's outside, whoever's outside first. Yeah. You treat that almost like a skill challenge. Exactly. To yeah. Eva- yeah. To evade and get away. And then when you're in the house, in the, in the walls, the rats or whatever the other thing is, it's not on your side mm-hmm. is the first combat encounter you have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Gotcha. Gotcha. I like this. Right? I like this. Because, these animals. Cause right? you get skill Just challenge. Go- Mm-hmm. And then you get into the house, you see the mirror, you see the farmer who has the demon inside him, uh, you know, and then you escape into the walls and then you have your first combat encounter uh, with some rats. The squirrel then helps you. And then there's probably some other encounters as you're making your way through the walls, running into weird things like raccoons, maybe, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then you solve or, solve or the issue. ghost there or ghost mm-hmm. thereof. Oh, know? yeah. Right. Because right. there's a thing. I, I think that that's too. a thing that's. Depending on depending on the age range, of course, of what you're playing and and who's at the table, you yeah. know, I think that's something I would drive home not all the time, but I'd make that perfectly clear that there's there are bones, mm-hmm. remains mm-hmm. in the field, you know, in the crawl spaces. You know, this is it's Ravenloft. This this place is not Disneyland. It is not your yeah. friend. You know. Yeah. I also like oh, that man. because in it. in a big sense, right? Uh, the the domains of dread are have these dark lords that are not just the big antagonist of the scene, but they're also like the prisoner of the domain, right? Mm-hmm. So so mm-hmm. everything there should be something that tortures the farmer as well. So I love the idea that all of these you know all of these burrowing creatures are constantly eating his crops. That's totally like mm-hmm. <laughs> it's torture. Well, uh, they must well, be like killed. We, we've even. <laughs> Well, like we've even added just just through description, we've added even another layer to that. It's these these burrowing creatures are eating my crops, and they're in my walls. Yeah, they're in the walls. Yeah, they're everywhere. He, he'd hear I can't the, go anywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah, I can't yeah. go anywhere. So, oh man. So you kind of feel sorry yeah. for the farmer, but it's already too late for the farmer. You can't fa- if, yeah. uh, uh-huh. save him because it is Ravenloft. But you 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 kind of feel that sympathy for the farmer. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. That's so good. It's also good because oh, now, man. yeah, absolutely. The crawl spaces should go everywhere in the house because the obviously mm-hmm. that's the torture part, right? <laughs> Creatures is, can go everywhere. The, <laughs> that is the torment yeah. of it. It yeah. can go yeah. it can go anywhere in the house, but 
and depending on how long your one shot goes or depending on your level of challenge on this, I think mm -hmm. that's where you have somebody like that squirrel mm -hmm. really come in handy because it's not just torment for him. It's anyone in this house is going to be tormented. So those crawl spaces yeah. are a maze. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this squirrel, this squirrel has enough, I guess in game terms, has made enough saving throws that their mental faculties are, are here and they know right. the way around, you know? Mm -hmm. So getting separated from the squirrel is bad. Yeah. And, 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 and maybe the squirrel is fighting it while you're doing it too. And they're slowly slipping away and occasionally yeah. like their eyes glow red for a second or they, you know, swipe at your mm -hmm. general direction, but don't hit you. But just, you know, like things like that. Um, I do like mm -hmm. uh, what, what Calis the Calisandra said in uh, the chat, uh, a little kid who wants to catch the bunnies. I like that cool. for, for two things. One, one thing you can do is, is I think it'd be a fun sequel to this, right? What, we're back in the farmhouse. What's going on now? Or if you were to expand this into a longer uh, multi-session, like maybe a, a campaign that goes over like three or four sessions, three three to five mm -hmm. sessions, right? You know, not a long one, just a short one. Like mm -hmm. then you could add really cool things. Like you could add a little kid who wants, wants to catch the bunnies. Uh, you could add... Uh, you know, uh, hell cows, right? Uh, from from Keith, right? Uh, you know, you know <laughs> crazy cows, mm -hmm. or you know, other yeah. things, or you 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 could make stories about how you uh you have to take, you have to get something from the farm and bring it back to the warren, and you can only carry so much, and you have to get a certain bulk of it, and it becomes, mm -hmm. it almost becomes a campaign in itself, and within the domain oh of gosh. dread, within Revenloft, with everything, like your entire campaign is on this farm, and. Uh, yeah. And that's just that's just like really I I think that's a really fun and cool idea, uh, and I'm gonna call I this think, and I think this I'm gonna call I, this I adventures bunnies and the barn. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's and I think that's a point you drive home to because there will be those groups who you'll read that box text and you'll describe how dangerous that forest behind you looks. Yeah, and they'll see the house and go for whatever reason they'll say, nope, not nope, I'll take my chances in the woods. But mm -hmm. in the classic Ravenloft way, there's mist in the woods. Oh, yeah. The mists, mm -hmm. you run into those woods, get so far into that mist, and you're running right out of that warren again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. the whichever entity is the Dark Lord here, they're not going to mm -hmm. let you leave. No. No. No, no. They're in my fields. They're in my walls. <laughs> I have to kill them all. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the man. and the and the mist is going to constantly bring new things to be in the field and in the walls, you know yeah. that that whole cycle is just terrible. But I do love that. I love that later versions of that the thing could evolve to where now there is that little kid. Like you're, I'm going to use this reference because I think it'll make the most sense. We're almost getting into like dark Toy Story territory. Oh yeah, where now there's sure, the kid yeah. you're scared of. <laughs> that kid may even have some of those haunted toys. That they oh, yeah. presented in Ravenloft and things like that. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole new foil there. Um, oh, I love that. I keep in my mm -hmm. mind, it's there, you're running out. And at the last moment, when you're trying to escape the mist, you look back at the house, there's a light up in the second story and a short child figure like staring out the window. You can just see the red mm -hmm. glint of yeah. their eyes. And you're like, oh, we're going to have to come back. <laughs> yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause, I oh, mean, yeah, there we go. The thing. I think the mists learn. I think mm -hmm. I think the the powers that be the dark powers that bring these things here and 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 hand out these punishments and these torments and build these domains and all this, I I think they very much would learn. And you here today, the group that's playing this today, if we're lucky, we're the group who escapes from mm -hmm. the dog and from the house mm -hmm. and the farmer, and they're going to let us go for now. But like right. you said, you look back and see the you see the birth of the upgrade. Yeah. Right. And and go, oh, we're gonna have to come back and deal with this again at some point. And, oh, and someday the mists will return. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so but good. But I I I, lo I love that just from the sense of oh no, the mist. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no. we're back at the uh, <laughs> it's the same farm, but now what have they changed? You know, right. It, oh, how yeah. can this, yeah, this be is, worse? This is really it can't a, be worse, right? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I, I will say that uh, if you join the Exploration Society through our Patreon, that there are opportunities to get one shots written by people who are involved with Saving Throw. Uh, and this might be a good opportunity for us to uh, to, to write one for, for October. Just saying. Join oh, that Patreon. Very nice. <laughs> That's a good one. That'd be a good one. Absolutely. Yeah, right? 
Oh, wow. man. All right. Okay. So uh, let's see here. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for this, Brian. We're going we're gonna to go and wrap <laughs> up the show. Uh, and uh, we'll hopefully have you back again sometime soon to talk about whatever upcoming projects you have. Uh, make sure to follow Brian on the social medias at D20Monkey all over the place. Uh, make sure and follow him right here on Twitch for when he is streaming some sweet, sweet video game action. Uh, join join his I'll Patreon. Be, draw, be drawing next week. Oh, nice. Yeah. Sorry, join his nice. Patreon. Talk over there. I apologize. Yeah. No, yeah, you're all good. Uh, we want to all game. make sure so you hit sorry. all your things. Uh huh. Yeah. I see how it is. Mm. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> meaning yeah, to do it. I mean, I'm you're, sorry. You're... <laughs> 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 so anyway, uh, join his Patreon. Uh, thank you so much, Brian. And we're we're gonna do our little bit of wrap up now, and we'll talk to you later, uh, Rich. This was a, a really fun episode. Thank you so oh much for, for, for doing this with me. <laughs> of course. Uh, Brian is amazing. Uh, folks who are watching in the chat, make sure and uh, hit that follow button. Hit that subscribe button if you have the availability. Remember, if you have Twitch Prime, you get a free sub. So you might as well use it on us. Um, and then uh, <laughs> also go ahead and uh, uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, subscribe, like, follow on YouTube. And I think I hit all the places. Uh, I right. don't believe we have a show immediately following this. Uh, Dom will let you know in the chat, hopefully. And yeah. Uh, yeah. So, Rich, That's where good. can folks uh, see you uh, or hear from you? Or what do you have coming up? Oh, my Anything? gosh. You can track me down on Twitter at rmelina. Um I'm trying to think if I have anything big coming up. I mean, the Academy Kickstarter is wrapping up this week. So it should be done, I think, on Tuesday, yeah. uh, June 2nd. Um, at the very least, I'll be writing some adventures there. So if you want to snag uh, one of my DM-friendly adventures, feel free to uh, to follow that Kickstarter there. Um, other than that, I'm going to take a short break, and then uh, then it's right back to teaching kids how to play D&D, which is fantastic. Awesome. Uh, the Kickstarter went well, so one thing I'm actually excited about uh, in Exploration Society news is starting to expand to other RPGs. Let's see if we can get some other stories told awesome. as well. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Yeah, uh, and excited. of course. Uh, of course, you can see me uh, DJing uh, here on Twitch a couple times a week. Uh, you can follow me at uh, DJ Pirate Rabbits. Uh, I do enjoy the bunnies. Uh, and uh, yeah, other than that, I guess we'll we'll see you all next week. Thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, remember to set your crock pot to warm and keep that <laughs> soup ready for us. We'll uh, we'll catch you <laughs> next time. <laughs> You're genius. <laughs> I know. I you know I like that joke so much.